watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. And by viewers like you. who actually lives in Jerusalem. Yes, Yuri? Yes, I live in Jerusalem in a, in a place called Katamon, okay. a very beautiful place to live. And Yuri is participating in a kind of reverse birthright Israel. When American young people go to Israel and participate on birthright Israel, there are always some Israelis who join each group. And Yuri, in the past you have joined a birthright group, correct? Yes, I have joined the group at the winter of 07 a group of 40 Jewish Americans who came to Israel with birthright from the DC Jewish community. First of all, what was that experience like for you? It was amazing. Ah. For me, it was what, what, looking in Israel from a different set of eyes, uh, seeing it new places I've been to lots of times before seemed totally new. Walking up Masada with 40 Americans with me, simply breathtaking. And what about your sense of their Jewishness? Anything about the Jewish identity of young Americans surprise you as a young Israeli? Yeah, in Israel, basically Judaism were, is a equivalent word to Orthodox. We have very few other movements, other streams in Judaism. There's the Center for Advanced Judaism, which is equivalent to the Reform Movement, but we hardly hear about it. Being with the Americans for services, for Havdalah, for Shabbat, showed me a different way to, uh, to experience Judaism, a way that uh, personally I feel much more belonging to. It's a more, much more fun way to experience Judaism. Now you have this wonderful opportunity to come to America on kind of a reverse birth, right? You are being hosted by an American Jewish family, correct? Yes, the project is, was created by the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington, and we're hosted at places of uh, previous birthright alums. I've been hosted by two amazing Americans, and not just the host, the entire group of birthright alums that are doing everything in their power to help us, to bring us into their rows, to hug us with, smother us with love uh, every, every single moment, going out every night in DC, being in Jewish centers, Jewish day schools, an incredible experience. Uh, how have you found simply the experience of visiting the United States of America for the first time? This is my first time in the States and my first time in DC, specifically afterwards I'll go to New York. It's first thing, it's a beautiful country. It's an amazing place to be in, so different than Israel that in w more than in ways than I can imagine. But I feel at home. Being here, I simply feel at home. Even I feel safe to walk the streets and speak Hebrew with the other Israelis and some of the Americans who understand Hebrew. Uh, seeing Hebrew si signs in Hebrew in the streets in certain places, going to the synagogue, same as I go in Israel and in Jerusalem, eating kosher food. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's simply, simply fun. How has the experience with young American Jews changed your own sense of Jewish identity? If I'll speak in a spiritual manner of myself as a Jew, Till now, I considered myself a secular Jew, because in Israel, as I said, there isn't something in the middle between circular. We have traditional Jew, which is an unclear phrase, but now I see myself more close to Reform Judaism, and I'm, I'm, I'm planning to visit the Reform communities in Israel and Jerusalem that I was told of one, and who knows, it, I think this experience strengthened my, fact, my being as a Jew more than the time I spent in Israel for the last 27 years. Wow. All right, speak to one more complicated issue for me, Yuri. There are some who worry about the Jewish character of Israel. That there are some young Israelis your age who feel close to the state of Israel, but not as a Jewish state. It's simply a Middle Eastern state that happens to be called Israel. To what extent, first of all, do you find that true among any of your peers? And what would you say to American Jews about what seems to be 
a contradiction, an internal dilemma, because Israel was created as a Jewish state. Speak to me about how your friends, kids your age, young people your age, feel about Jewishness and your concern about it as well. I, first of thing, first of all, I grew up at a very Zionist home, a youth movement Beitar. Um, I was the head of uh, Camp of Beitar a few times, few, few years, and I grew up knowing that there is an unbreakable connection between Israel, the land, Israel, the state, and the Jewish nation, the Jewish, the Bible, and the Jewish origins we have. Are you, uh, are you typical? Where, where I lived, I'm typical. In the Hebrew University, I'm typical. Most of the people feel the way I do. Uh, for example, when I, won't wake, I walked to Masada, I went to Masada with friends of mine. When we climbed the snake trail that's leading up, we put on the speakers a uh, song of virtues. And that's what we heard on the way up. That really is a strong connection between the Bible and the place we're at. The, Israel, uh, the history of Israel, uh, the story by Yosef of Spravius about the protectors of Masada. It's a story, that it's an unbreakable bond. There are Israelis, and you can't deny it, who feel more Israeli than the Jew. Uh, luckily, there are few. Most Israelis know that you cannot break it, and Israel won't exist as a non-Jewish nation. It's, it's location in the, it's surrounded by Islamic world, and the fact that we have lots of non-Jews inside Israel, something has to f keep the consistency of Israel as a state. In my opinion, it won't stay as Jewish as it is now by the way of Orthodox Judaism. I think that within the, the years, Reform Judaism, Conservative Judaism will take a better, uh, higher and more, more important place in Israel, which I, which I think personally it's the right way to do it because Jew, Jew, being a Jew is supposed to be a choice, not a matter of must. And when you have only one, sh one option, either being an Orthodox Jew or seeing yourself a secular Jew, it won't work, in my opinion. Uh, modern Judaism is different than what used to be in the Bible days. I, I don't think uh, there is any chance that Israel won't be Jewish. Maybe it will change than the current state. Okay. Yuri, do you hate Palestinians? No. I served for three years in the army as a soldier in an infantry battalion, and I have no hate neither towards Arabs in general, Muslims, or Palestinians. There, you can't generalize an entire population. So it doesn't work. It's, and even if someone has said he hates, he hates Palestinians, it's because of maybe ignorance, maybe lack of the way of, to speak, but absolutely not. I don't, I personally, I don't know any Israelis, including those who lost dear ones in Piguim. I lost, my cousin was killed in the army a few years ago in Bethlehem. He was shot from an ambush, and still, I don't hate people in general. Hate is a phrase I hardly use. Do Palestinians hate Israelis? No. Again, you cannot generalize those things. In Jerusalem, we have lots of visitors from the Palestinian Authority, from less than from Gaza Strip, most from the, mostly from the West Bank, walking the same streets, eating at the same places. I go, I think, every two weeks to the Jewish quarter and the Arab quarter of all Jerusalem. Feel safe there, as safe as I am in Ben Yehuda Street in Tel Aviv or at the Alibi Market. Do you believe there are Palestinians among the Palestinian leadership? who really are ready to live side by side in peace with the state of Israel? I think so. I think they're the quiet voice because of the way of life in the Palestinian Authority. They cannot express themselves because the Hamas or the most, the more religious and extreme uh, Islamic streams would uh, be offended and it will only hurt them as leaders and they won't last as leaders that long. But I think that through uh, economical peace and through cooperation, those disquiet voices will become stronger and will become the dominant ones. Do you and your friends support the notion of a two-state solution where a Palestinian state would be created on the West Bank and in fact would live in peace side by side with the state of Israel? I can't speak about my friends because I don't talk about it with everybody. I choose pretty carefully who I speak with because I want to stay friends with them and this is a very tender subject for lots of the Israelis. Personally, I, too, I do believe in the solution of two nations for two countries, but not in its current uh, pathway because currently, as it's stated now, I'm not sure it will work. It's, it's, it should come, out, it, it, sh it shouldn't be the first step. The first step should be um, economical ties between Palestinians and Israel, uh, Israelis cooperation between parties and uh, non-political movements, uh, economical cooperation, and then the solution of two states for two countries will come by itself. Do your parents agree with you? 
my parents agree. I think that my parents agreed with me. You can, I know their, their political vote, so I guess they believe with me. They, they agree with me, but and they believe the same purpose, the same cause, because I can see a different solution. Uh, trying to create one homogeneous society won't work. Not in my opinion. Are you prepared to see East Jerusalem be the capital of a Palestinian state? It's a hard question because of the fact that the house I lived in and the house I grew up in, Jerusalem has always been my center of attention. The, fact, the reason I'm studying in Jerusalem for the last five years is because to me, and I say again, to me personally, as an Israeli, I have to live in Jerusalem. It's something, in my opinion, every Israeli has to do at least once in his lifetime. But if that will be the, the only way to get real peace, and by real peace I mean like the peace with uh, Jordan, that is amazing in my eyes, I think we have no choice. The only place in Israel which, in my opinion, we cannot give is the Golan Heights. And that, and that I say from the military point of view, as someone who served there for three, for three years. And how about the Temple Mount? If it turns out that the Palestinian flag flew over the Temple Mount, but Jews had access to the Western Wall, could you live with that? Only the Palestinian flag? No. Both flags? Again, if that's the only solution, total cooperation. Uh, uh, the, the control of the, mount, of the Temple Mount will be a united one, maybe UN, maybe US will be involved uh, politically in the area. I think that the, the, I read a book once, I don't remember which, which, was the, which one was the author, I think it was an American author, that described Jerusalem as a, like, like Washington DC. It doesn't belong to any state. It's a neutral zone, whenever anyone can get in, the police there is non-Israeli, non-Palestinian, but a uni but an international one. That might, maybe that will be the solution. Yeah, I want to make it clear: Washington is the capital of America, although it is not a separate state. It is America. Still, Jerusalem will be both can be both Israel and both the Palestinian nation, the capital for both. Okay. And I want to push you one more moment, Yuri. If I said to you, you could have real peace. And that means that you, your friends, any children you ever bring into this world would never live in fear of their safety. You would not be willing to give up. You would not be willing to see a Palestinian flag fly over the Temple Mount for real peace? As the only flag, no. That's the way I grew up. Because Jerusalem has been and always will be a Jewish city. But maybe it does have to be an only Jewish city. Because after all, it's the center for all monotheistic religious in the world, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Yuri Lerner, you are a lovely human being. <laughs> Kol tuva haslacha to you. Thank I you have enjoyed much. talking to you so much. Thank you. It is to our benefit that you're visiting the United States. I hope one day when we're in Israel, maybe we'll get to talk to you there as well. I hope so the same. If you're in Jerusalem, give me a call. Okay. Yuri Lerner.